Fidel Castro is a totalitarian communist. Uh, I don't believe that, that President Obama in any way is like Fidel Castro. But I do believe he is in exactly the tradition of the French socialist or the Italian socialist or the German socialist. I think he'd have been very comfortable in the Social Democratic Party in Germany. I think he'd have been very comfortable in the pre-Tony Blair Labour Party in Great Britain. This massive bailout is not a solution. It is a financial socialism and it's un-American. This is a move towards socialism, more like a socialized Europe. European socialism doesn't work. You get this done, we are on the road to European socialism, we are on the road to a different kind of America. So he has taken a Western European model, France, Sweden, the Netherlands, and he says, I like that, the nanny state, cradle to grave entitlements. Everybody gets something so nobody is destitute. I'm Barack Obama. I like that. We really want to change America into Sweden. Where are we going to leave the country in two years if we take all of these steps? We will have made a dramatic move in the direction of indeed turning America into Western Europe. Western Europe? No! The horror! The horror! Well, that old canard has been given new life as the rallying cry for the right wing against everything President Obama has tried to do. Healthcare, it's European socialism. Regulate the banks, European socialism. Lose the Bush tax cuts, European socialism. Just what is it about European socialism that is so bad? Brace yourselves. According to Thomas Gagan in his new book, Were You Born on the Wrong Continent? Actually, not much. In fact, if you got to know European socialism, you just might like it. Tom Gagan joins me now from Chicago. Thanks so much for being here, Tom. Hey, Chris. Thanks for inviting me. Okay, so give me your, 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 your elevator pitch for European socialism. Why, why is it not so bad? Why was I born on the wrong continent? Uh, give the elevator pitch in August, Chris. <laughs> you know, this is the time of year when we should be sitting around a lake drinking a few Beck's beers. If you like that kind of life and think your employer should pay for it, check out European socialism. That's, that, that, that would be a reference to the six or seven weeks paid vacation, right? That, that, that is standard in the, in the social democracies of Europe. Uh, Chris, in Germany and France, the average work time per year is about 1,500 hours. In the U.S., it's closer to 2,000. That leaves 500 hours of extra free time for Europeans. I mean, you only have one life to live. <laughs> you know, an economics professor once said to me a very w wise words, which I've, I've kept with me ever since, which is that time is the one resource they're never making any more of. But, but you know, the response from the right when you, when you bring up vacation like that is like, well, but look, they're an economic basket case, right? Yes, they get this vacation, but, you know, they don't produce very much and they have high unemployment and they're all indolent and the whole thing is, is, is going to, you know, uh, go bankrupt soon. Hey, Chris, the reason I wrote the book is I wanted to explore why is it that Germany is the most competitive country in the world? Uh, they uh, were the world's biggest debtor. They're the world's, well, they're one of the world's biggest creditors. Since 2003... Germany has either been tied or the, with China or the leading exporter in the world, and Germany and France together just wallop China in terms of export sales. So they do it through actually unions, high wages, worker control of, or more worker control than we ever dream of here, of the corporations and a commitment uh, to manufacturing that, uh, that has completely disappeared in this country. Yeah, you, you talk a lot about the German model. There's, there's two elements I thought were interesting. One is this sort of focus on kind of very um, capital intensive, but, but very sort of high tech and, and, and expertise driven manufacturing. And also that there is this union uh, participation in corporate boards. How is that model work? It certainly sounds radical over here, but, but you make a very convincing case for it in the book. What makes it work is that the, the uh, fact that the Germans have uh, intense worker involvement, in fact, it's probably got the most worker control of any economy in the world, and that includes China, uh, it helps keep skills together. It's a way, it, it encourages people to invest in themselves. It, it holds together, if I may use a clunky economic term, human capital, high skills, in a way that flexible labor markets don't. I don't want to get into economic speak, but I, I really am convinced that giving working people a kind of role in running the corporations that they work for, albeit limited, putting them on corporate boards, putting high school graduates on, on the boards of big global corporations precisely because they are high school graduates, 
you know, is one of the reasons that Germany has kept a commitment to manufacturing and being competitive while we've turned into a casino type capitalist society. Last and very quickly, do you think this is just a difference in preferences? I mean, I think that the, the you know, the Bill O'Reilly's of the world would say, well, look, we really we just like uh, the way we have things here and we're never going to be we're never going to be Europe. Do you think it's just that the American spirit is different than the German or French? Hey, do Americans want to retire rich uh, even if they're middle class or they want to get out of debt? You know, I, I the the German system, um, uh, the European social democracy was modeled on American social democracy. Tom Gagan, his new book is Were You Born on the Wrong Continent? His first book is Which Side Are You On? It is by far one of my favorite books ever of all time. You should get that one too. Tom, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thanks, Chris.